they were closing down the production offices because they didn't need the physical location anymore. So obviously we went to the kitchen. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slave. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slave. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we're discussing how we're spending our social isolation time, Mike. Yes, what is this, uh, part three, part four now? I've lost track of the weeks and the episodes, to be honest. I'm really surprised we remember it Sunday at this point. (laughs) It's the only thing keeping us together. Uh, We're also looking forward to more Disney Plus movies and possibly TV shows coming our way. Yes, please, anything streaming. We need it more than ever right now. Content is key in this time. (laughs) Uh, Especially when Chris Hemsworth and the Russo brothers are teaming up again. Mm Mm-hmm. For a Netflix movie, I think this month and more. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about this episode a lot recently because we were playing uh, some online video games uh, just the other day, and you were just like, oh man, I haven't found really any news for us uh, yet. Things, <laughs> it's slim pickings out there. <laughs> So uh, when I got online today, I started like poking around and I I, I think the best way to describe today's episode, it's like our group chat. These are the things that Chris and I and mutual friends talk about throughout the week that maybe sometimes don't make it into the episode. It's definitely all nerd adjacent. These are all things that would have gotten me like beaten up in middle school for like getting too excited about. Uh, So it's still within the zeitgeist of the things that we like. But, you know, it's just there's still deals for sure being made in Hollywood right now, but just nothing's really pushing forward. Nothing's really moving. You know, we had some, uh, we had some zoom zoom chats with some industry friends who were like editors and whatnot over the weekend. And they were kind of talking about how, you know, they're just kind of like slowly waiting for things to kick back up. And it was, so we're just kind of in the waiting period, but luckily digital content is, is usually nerdy and that stuff can still be made. So we're going to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, we we're always talking about stuff, whether you guys know it in the show or not. I believe um, a friend of the show, Quentin Parker, I was playing Call of Duty with him this week, and someone was like, "Well, uh, someone said to me, oh, you're always, are you like always testing new snacks and trying new things? I'm like, oh, sir, you have no idea. <laughs> and Quentin was like, oh, my gosh, half of Chris and Mike's stuff usually is about trying new food or new <laughs> photos of of snacks it's, and things. It's great, yeah. If you're new to the show, we constantly say if we had a uh, more free time, we would start up another podcast just about just about snacks because they're and, delicious. And you'd think we'd have more free time <laughs> right now, but let me tell you what: we've been busy people. We're out there exploring other things, doing new stuff. Mike, you got enough retweets to watch the Ramen Girl. Yes, that's right. I talked about it. Last week on the show, if I got 10 retweets, I would watch this bizarre movie I came across on Hulu, the 2008 film uh, starring Brittany Murphy. Uh, I double-checked. This was not the last movie she made before she passed away. That's what I was really worried about. I didn't want this to be her legacy. I don't remember what it was, but this was maybe like her fifth last movie, so it was kind of towards the end of her uh, career, unfortunately. But yeah, I came across a trailer on Hulu. It just seemed very, very bizarre. And it just kind of seemed like, oh, maybe this is one of those movies that's so bad it'll, it's good. So uh, since I talked about it last week, I was just like, I have to watch it before we record today's show or people are going to call me out for not watching it. But I found a sneaky workaround of a Chrome Ooh. extension that lets me speed up HTML5 video player within Hulu. So uh, I, I sped up. I sped it up to at least 2x. The the UI on the extension wasn't really working, so I just kind of had to gauge how fast it was going. So I sped it up to as fast as I could comprehend the story. Uh, so this will be a little bit of a mixed bag review of what's it like to watch something at like twice as fast the speed, and especially when it's a movie you don't really know anything about. Um, I will say, uh, critically, no one should ever review any content at 2x speed because you can just not retain you cannot retain the nuances that might be in any sort of film, whether it's just kind of a cheesy Brittany Murphy romantic comedy about ramen or whether it's like Lord of the Rings. You can't get any gauge of like pacing or mood or tone because everything just zooms by. It's not necessarily like a Benny Hill sketch where everybody's like running around at super speed because believe it or not, there's a lot of movies where people are just sitting down and talking and it just kind of helps you get through those parts a little bit faster. Um, 
but I would say I still retained uh, the plot of the story, okay. what the characters were like and stuff. Uh, it was just very strange. Like, there's a lot of just like, oh, dumb American girl thinks Japanese people do this, or um, oh, uh, dumb Japanese people do this, but from this American girl's perspective. So there's some, maybe some insensitive cultural stuff happening, but everybody seemed to be having a good time for the most part. Uh, there was this overly fetish, fetish, fetishization if that's the word about ramen of the soup uh so and it, there was like kind of these weird like um spiritual japanesey things at the beginning of the movie where she was having visions of like that kind of thank you cat that does the little dippy arm mm -hmm. and that was doing some like uh weird like arm wavy stuff and there was like magical wind and they called her typhoon girl i don't know it was very bizarre but i have to say at the speed i watched it I it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So so, it, so we need this opportunity for a lot of bad movies. Is what yeah, you're saying. yeah. So if anybody out there, uh, you know, wants to watch it at one x speed and maybe compare notes, there's no way I'm going back and rewatching it. But this is more of an experiment for me. What's it like to watch stuff faster? So I would say very impractical at twice the speed. But I have heard people out there legitimately like listen to podcasts at 1.25x. So just speeding things well, up a little bit. So I think that might be more manageable. But the faster you get, the more you're just kind of doing yourself a disservice, well, I'd well, say. What I will tell you is I uh, my, my job has a um, – I guess a book club program if where you read books for personal growth and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You get points. The points add up and cash them in for free money, right? Um, most of the books I listen to, audiobooks, I listen at 1.5 mm -hmm. um, because audiobooks purposely, when they read those, they slow down so anyone can understand them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if you speed up to 1.5, it sounds what they really sound like. And that has helped me quite a bit uh, get through some like eight hour books. Um, yeah, exactly. And it seems speed. like, oh, just only speeding it up a quarter. That doesn't seem like much. But, you know, like if, if it's a whole book, you're talking like, well, do I listen to this book over 10 hours or do I listen to it over, you know, like seven and a half? What I, I just, just saved uh, three and a half hours. So, yeah, that's just because there was a big controversy kind of last year about Netflix, Netflix toying around with this idea of increasing uh, watch speeds. I don't think it's going to affect culture all that much it'll just give people out there an option um so i don't know so there's my experiment into the ramen girl uh a bizarre movie uh happy ending if that's what you if that's what you were looking for uh, you know there you go the this, isn't, this isn't a, a solid recommendation this is the other thing you've been trying to push on me all weekend so so tell me about the outsider mike and why oh, people should listen yeah, to it the outsider on hbo uh so we're going from basically romantic schlock to kind of prestige television uh the outsider is a 10-part series uh on hbo um, and it's a, an adaption of a Stephen King novel. And unfortunately, I don't really want to tell anybody else more about it just because, I mean, it's not really a spoiler to say there's a twist involved in the series. I mean, I think people kind of expect, you know, something crazy happening with a, uh, with a Stephen King story, if you will. So all I can say is I recommend the series. Um, they, they, they don't necessarily leave it open for a season two because I was kind of confused because when you watch it on HBO, it says season one of The Outsider streaming now. Usually if it's like a mini series, I'll kind of maybe specifically say it's a mini series. So I was like, well, maybe it's just their, their content management system just pulls in anything and says it's season one. So at the end, they do, they do very much wrap up the stories and the characters, uh, but they leave it open maybe for other characters to move on and exist. So I would say it might be worthwhile to invest time into watching The Outsider because I think it might go on to be something else and different. Um, I, I, uh, of course, as soon as I finished watching it, I went out and I read some blogs about the differences between the show and the book and it seems like they were relatively faithful to the story overall so if you're a stickler for that but yeah it was nice just watching something really intense it was uh it was kind of uh spooky and creepy at the beginning of it um yeah it really grabbed us so uh yeah the outsider on hbo uh recommendation there you go mike's been eating that content up man just absorbing it consuming mm -hmm. it all weekend long um I, I'm going to tell you, a lot of, I'm just going to go ahead and for a lot of our first stuff is about video games this week, because that's how we're <laughs> keeping sane, and one of the video games I got to play this week was Final Fantasy, Mike, mm -hmm. and let me tell you, before everyone gets very excited, it wasn't the new Final Fantasy VII remake, <laughs> 
No, sir. It was Final Fantasy VIII Remastered because Final Fantasy VIII is my jam. And I shared a picture of Mike with this. I went to eBay a couple weeks ago and bought the original. It's not Prima. It's Brady Game Strategy Guide uh, for this. So I have the original book with the nostalgia factor in this remastered game. And they've added three cool things to this, Mike. Mm -hmm. They've taken like an emulator approach to this remaster. Okay. If you click the left stick in, it will play at 3x speed. Oh, Oh, see, this is the theme of today's podcast. I feel like if you're you're on your podcast player now, Mm -hmm. mess with your speeds. It, It seems to be calling. Yeah, so uh, I I got really spoiled with that the first like you know hour because it's weird because if, if there's a timer in the game it doesn't speed up just the gameplay does so it's very interesting uh, to see that approach if you click the other stick it automatically gives you access to your ultimate moves rather than having to be in like a quarter health. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a little easier to play for you. That I don't turn that one on. I don't like. I want a little bit of a challenge. You know what? I love this approach because all of these things are all about hitting the nostalgia. But the thing is, yeah. when you're remembering back in the day, you're not remembering the grind of getting these moves. <laughs> you're remembering using them. This is kind of very similar to what was it, Dragon Ball Z Kai, yeah. where they cut all the fluff out that you really you hated as a kid just to get to the cool fights that were built up all week. I love this idea of kind of really getting. The nostalgia yeah. just right to you. Exactly. And the last thing, if you click in both sticks, it turns on a no random encounter mode. So oh. you don't have to be annoyed as hell if you're just exploring. An wow, area. this this is great. And with the speed increase too, yeah, this is uh, we're really really hitting yeah. it on the head here. So I I'm again Final Fantasy. VIII, I think it's on sale right now. I bought it on sale when I bought it, you know, a while back. But like, if you're a fan of older Final Fantasy games, I don't care which one you like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 whatever there's there's 15 plus of them now at least um eight has been really fun to revisit with these uh little little features in there don't and I don't think there's f- more to uh, you're, you're leaving out the coolest thing is your strategy guide came yeah. with a little bonus it does so the, apparently when you bought the strategy guide in 1999 it came with temporary tattoos of the <laughs> characters and the artwork for final fantasy which final fantasy artwork has always been awesome like they, mm-hmm. they put all their all in that artwork right mm-hmm. you know yep. what you know what so you get these tattoos and they're all intact in the back of this book never touched never taken out so. oh that's so cool it was worth the eBay uh, trip to, to get this because I hate going to eBay sometimes. Now, you know what? You're you're, mar- you're a married man. You own a house. I feel like you're in the safe zone where you're allowed to go purchase a replica gun sword because that's the coolest thing about Final Fantasy VIII and just mount it on your wall. And then when people come over, they won't look at you and judge you because they're like, look at all I have. Yes, I have a gun sword. You cannot judge me. I'm a fully employed male with a yeah. wife. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore all the pop vinyls. Just focus on the gun blade i've purchased here mm-hmm. uh, that can actually fire bullets at the same time you know uh, no <sighs> that'd be sick it would, it would <laughs> be it would be i think i think you know they say the pen is mightier than the sword but they need to meet a gun blade yeah it's definitely is mightier <laughs> um but you mentioned as a homeowner what have i been doing the past three days it feels like uh first and foremost i went and had to buy a new lawnmower this week mike and i shared with you my experience because i bought a battery powered lawnmower. <laughs> uh, my car is electric and my lawnmower is electric now too. And um, they also say that it's electric. Do, 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 <laughs> do. Um, but what's been cool about it is it's a self propelled mower and I've never had one of these before. Uh, so pushing my lawnmower up my huge ass hill that my house sits on, uh, it's never been easier by just pulling this lever and it's like a, it's like a remote control car. It just, takes itself up the hill. So, bike. so we, we were talking about nostalgia briefly, and I feel like my strongest connection to my childhood is my dad is in love with his lawn. He's very much a Hank Hill archetype. So I grew up over the weekends with the sound of gas powered lawnmowers. So, uh, I definitely, uh, uh, um, am, am accepting of all electric technology cause it's simpler and it's just better all, all around. Uh, but mm. what does an electric lawnmower sound like? It's it's a, it's really quiet. Like uh, I mentioned to you, I meant to listen to music when I mow to drown out the the motor. Right? Uh-huh. Uh, I forgot to turn my air, music on. I just had hair bods in the whole time I was pushing this mower around because <laughs> it was very it's very quiet. It's still got to spin the blades, but it, uh-huh. it's not very it's not as loud. Uh, so it's, if not, you will. it's a more peaceful experience. It sounds like. yeah yeah definitely more more consistent. Um, I, I think my my weed whacker is a little louder if I could <laughs> uh, well, say so. Um, well, good good to know. 
well, yeah, and I and I, I, I got to use that. And then um, I've been sharing, I've been documenting this. It's not nearly done, but I, I'm hanging drywall in my garage for oh, the first God. time ever. That's the most mature thing you've ever said on the podcast, Chris. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, it's probably <laughs> I my it's it's a whole body workout. So if you're looking for some at home workouts, take down some drywall, put it back up. You'll be miserable uh, when it's all said and done. Use every muscle in your body. But I um. Again, we talked about this before the show. I'm learning some of the stuff the hard way, the things they don't teach you in school, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how, which a proper way to put the drywall against the wall is vertical, not horizontal, and then stack another one on top of it because now I feel like a jackass when I look at the wall. <laughs> However, you know, I was able to do it, and the drywall lined up and everything's level. So I'm like, I think I taught myself a new skill in a worst-case scenario. But at the same time, I'm like, I did a lot more work than I needed to for this. Um but the whole point of that is we never have touched our garage since we move in. It's just been framed in, no drywall, nothing. Uh-huh. So we have paint, taken everything off, painted the walls that were there. I, I got a new cabinet put in. It's going to look great when it's done. So I'm documenting the whole thing. So follow me later, and I'll show everyone the whole process by the time I'm done if I end up not going crazy. I love it. I love that we're both being productive during this time. Yeah, in different ways. Um, Mike replaced the couch cushion. <laughs> hey, it had a 90 degree turn at the edge. I... So it was very intense. My wife and I spent minutes trying to cram that thing back into the uh, cushion case that came with it. I think you did a great job. I'm, I'm not knocking it at all. If I had Thank an you. apartment and I didn't have to hang drywall, by God, <laughs> I'd be doing that too. I'd be watching ramen girl movies and, and just sitting on the couch <laughs> Um, oh, I, but, love, I love making you jealous, Chris. Yeah. Do you have to do you get a new butt groove going in the, the cushion, like where you had it all worked well, in before? No, the, 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 that was the problem. We we put a butt groove in the old cushion, and it was just too much. Like you, It felt like your butt was starting to feel the bottom of the couch, like oh, the frame. Yeah. So you know what? If, if anybody else has a similar scenario out there, a high-density foam is pretty affordable out there on Amazon. You kind of have to buy in bulk, you know, because... Uh, couch cushions are large anyway so you want to do a couple cushions at a time for sure but it's great because like um the if you if you don't go to the effort of trying to put like an extra layer of fabric around the cushion which is what our old cushions looked like and you just put the high density foam right in there your cushions will look like freaking lego blocks <laughs> that mm. like if you cut it right and it'll just be all these crisp corners but it's soft so you, you you gotta see it to believe it but uh anything's good for our butts if you're sitting like down a- street a lot you gotta you gotta take care of your butt yeah, does it feel like a new cushion, new couch? Oh, hell yeah. Good, because I'm going to need you to feel really good when we're playing Call of Duty Warzone this week. <laughs> uh, segue in our first topic, Call of Duty Warzone. We've been playing it this week, the yeah. past couple of weeks, actually. Yeah, let's uh, the s- small round of applause for Call yeah. of Duty finally making it into the news segment, uh, mm-hmm. mainly because I found a little bit of news around it, so now we can officially graduate it into the show rotation. Yep, yep, exactly. We play. We um, They have on um, this new season launch this week, so they can do squads, four players, three players, mm-hmm. and one player. Why they haven't just added two players in to make it easy, I don't know, Mike, but... To one, leave you wanting more. They leave you wanting more. Right. And, and the, really, the first day this happened, I'm like, okay, we can play four people now, you know, uh, one through four. We had five people. I'm like, well, of course, the math never lines up perfectly to have a, a, everyone play together. So hopefully they get it to where it's, you know, everyone can play together soon. But uh, it says here, you know, um, this this free-to-play games in its third season... Uh, but it had has had more than 50 million players one month after the launch, huh? So yeah, I had to I had to know what that was in context because I don't play a lot of free to play online shooters, and really, honestly, the only reason I am playing it because all of you guys were and it was free. So I I still have yet paid any money to to play this game, and also I don't play for the PlayStation membership so much so i don't even know what it's called so uh, PlayStation no money plus plus maybe that's what it's called it's so so yeah i'm min maxing as chris likes to say i'm getting as much entertainment out of this as possible for zero amount of dollars so i looked it up uh the numbers last year for fortnite were 250 million which you know F- fortnite's the king it make it makes sense that they have all of those users even netflix competes with Fortnite at that level. But uh, a more comparable note of Apex Legends, uh, which I think is another kind of dominant free shooter, yeah. had uh, around 70 million players in October. So Call of Duty, is, they got that brand name to really pull people in. So I've been having fun. I've been having a blast. I, I'm going to I'm gonna come back to this kind of the themes of Call of Duty when we talk about a trailer a little bit later yeah. in the show. So I feel like a lot of these like war zone things are on the, on the front of my brain. Like it's been a while since I've really been into the mechanics of a video game. I've been playing a lot of casual stuff 
at the last couple of years that don't require like a whole lot of hyper strategy that I would say an online shooter does because there's so much coordination to do. So like I was in bed last night going like, man, I think I should balance my um, my submachine gun because if I use the, the one Chris is using is fine, but I feel like I run out of a clip before I kill a guy. So maybe I should find something that has a little bit more damage and maybe less fire well, rate. Maybe that'll balance out. So like I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really into this right now. Well, you can, at least you can mod your weapons. You can add a bigger clip to it when you level it up. That's so, true. That's, but either way, Call of Duty Warzone's been free. It's a popular game. It's cross-platform. I'm on my Xbox. Mike's is on his PlayStation. This is a wonderful experience for people around the world to really play together and stay in contact with each other without having to you know, break the bank, buy a new console, buy, buy a game even. Hell, um, you, you can save your money by playing this and just uh, <laughs> not, not buying into it. So That's right. Um, uh, just leave a lot of time. The installation times are ridiculous. The first time you install it, you're probably just not going to play it that day. It's just going to take forever. Ever, and then, God forbid, you're trying to hop on and there's an update. So just maybe give some lead time if something new pops well, into the game. Or or put your make sure your auto updates are turned on. That way mm-hmm. it, it just does it in the background while you're, while you're working. So mm-hmm. I think that's been fun. Uh, what's going to be interesting to see, Mike, is will the next generation consoles have this crossplay feature that we know? Will PlayStation 4 players be against PlayStation 5 players on these free-to-play oh, games. Interesting. Um, because, you know, we're getting closer and closer to these new consoles, and the PlayStation 5 revealed uh, their new controller design this this week uh, to mixed fanfare, I think, uh, around yeah. around the yeah, world. Yeah, it uh, looks like they're changing the name. It's no longer the Dual Shock. Yeah. It's the Dual Sense 5, so I'm guessing the 5 plays off of the PlayStation 5. Uh, yeah, it was weird. It, the weird thing about getting back into video games, which I've always kind of been tangentially in I just kind of keep an eye on it in the corner of my eyes like okay don't do anything crazy got to make sure I can keep up with the kids out there these days but now kind of really diving back into it like it's the video game video game discourse is, is as insane as it's always been like because we haven't seen any visual markers of what the PlayStation 5 will look like except for this controller and of course everybody has opinions about a controller it's just right. hilarious like this just kind of looks like a, it's a little bit maybe kind of edging towards maybe the ergonomic ergonomics of a um, of an Xbox controller uh, they seem to be moving more towards the white color scheme and I think that's kind of what's freaking people out they just yeah. they miss the the normal colors but it's just like go on Amazon right now and look at any video game controller there's a thousand different color variations and if looking at this PlayStation controller for the PlayStation 5 tells me anything as that this is gonna have custom face plates out the wazoo like well, they've already been tons of like artists out there on social media like showing all all these new different ideas that you could do to customize a controller for visuals. You know? Here's what I'm going to tell you, Mike. Out of every video game I've ever played, I don't look at my controller once. <laughs> if it feels good in my hands and I know where the buttons are, I'm not looking. Even if I don't know where the buttons are and I'm fumbling, I'm not looking at my controller, right? Yeah. I'm just mashing buttons at this point. Well, I really, well, I think, you know, people are really, you know, upset because it looks more like an Xbox controller with the curved handles and the white. But I will tell you right now, as a VR owners, both of us, what color is our VR headset? Yeah, it does. Actually, I didn't even think about that. It does look a lot like the PSVR. Yeah, it's the same color scheme as the VR. The blue as, as the same as the, the head, the lights on the headset, the white and the black. And, and honestly, what's interesting to me is mostly that they took the colors off of the shapes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, as long as the buttons are in the same spot, I think everyone will be fine. I think the only real critique, like legitimate critique I've seen about this controller is the options button and the share button on the controller have new icons to identify them and they're not really straightforward yes they're they're lines like the share button has like kind of three lines that kind of look like an explosion like and the options the outwards yeah yeah and the options button kind of has that hamburger menu icon but you know if you're trying to throw text up on your video game screen to say press this button to do this thing like you're gonna have like these weird like kind of three lines so that might be kind of weird to kind of get get across like with a word like right. you can tell somebody to press the options button but how do you tell somebody to press the three lines that look like an explosion well, button so i get that from they, uh from they, a but they've been critique. doing that for years xbox doesn't have words and the playstation 4 doesn't have words i think on theirs um, they do it says options and oh, share yeah no mm-hmm. xbox doesn't so to me it's second nature i see the icon i'm like oh, i know which one that one is mm-hmm. uh, what's, what's interesting is you know i will always do this i still do this today when we play i'm like press the start button 
well, which one's the start button? What's the one on the right? Like, yeah, instinctively, it's the one on the right. Select is the one on the left. <laughs> uh, do those exist anymore? No, not even close. But I think you know we're, we're, why I told you is is interesting on this is that they actually put a built-in microphone into the controller now. So if you don't have a headset uh, or it's not handy or you know it's charging or whatever and it's broken, you can talk to the controller to talk to your friends yeah, very quickly. I, I think that's great, and I've really learned a lot about uh, headset technology over the last week or two because I needed a new one and there's this huge like high-end community for headsets but what I didn't realize is there's this whole like bluetooth uh, architecture that specifically headsets for gaming use as opposed to like listening to music like through earbuds or you know other bluetooth headsets for music because that you want really low latency because I guess a lot of people what I didn't realize is they're listening to their game audio through their headphones mm -hmm. because you get that higher quality of accuracy especially in a game like Warzone where people are always creeping around corners and you can hear them so uh, they want like a lower latency thing so there yeah there's a lot more technology into the audio side of this than I thought that there would be and I guess the other new feature which might exist already I don't know I know Xbox has like a pro controller mm -hmm. I'm not sure if PlayStation has one but if they did they might have what this new controller has which was the adaptive triggers they, so where you'll feel like a force on them yeah the, the pro controller does not simply because no games have this built in yet um, mm -hmm. the game have to build in this technology but like if you're pulling back a bow with your triggers right playing uh, exactly. what's the Horizon Zero Dawn you would feel the pressure as as you pull down the trigger with each one yeah uh, kind of giving a little bit of feedback that way um you do it and i expect you know I, I that's pretty cool i would like to see that used in vr on those vr uh the the move controllers mike having yeah like, adaptive cool. stuff would be awesome um because i find myself playing and i'm like i'm like man this would be cool to do some stuff with that but i think what's i really like this controller and i think what we're going to see and the reason i brought up the buttons is because i think they're going to remove you're going to see icons instead of colors on screens going mm -hmm. forward. So, like, press X, and it's not going to be a blue X anymore. It's just going to be X. Um, and what this means, you know, going forward, will this be backwards compatible? Probably not. Um, but I, I'm interested. I really like the look of this controller, Mike. I think yeah, it's going to be fun. It, look, it looks good. And it's it's mid-April right now. E3 normally is usually scheduled for May, and it's been canceled, and there's no sort of official thing going on. So a lot of video game companies out there uh, will be doing kind of like their own State of the Unions, I'm guessing, around May. Yeah, so I, I think, think PlayStation I, wasn't going anyway. They, they've skipped the past two years. So. Yeah, so they, they usually kind of do their own thing. So I would imagine we'll be seeing like an official announcement of what the PS5 will look like and that makes sense why the controller was put out yeah. there first. It will, I, I don't know if we talked about last week or just in our group chat, but people have said that the PlayStation 5 is overheating and, and breaking right now in the dev unit, so... Uh, I'm going to be interested to see if there's a delay on this machine or not. And, yeah. Uh, and, and pointed towards the um, COVID-19. Yeah, I was saying, I don't know if anybody out there has like the uh, release dates right in front of them, so maybe they can contradict me uh, right away. But I feel like over the years that I've been alive, we've never had consoles come out at the exact same time. I don't know if that was planned or if there's always just been delays in one console the or another console. But it, it was, just seems strange that the PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox were kind of slated to release around the same time. And I was like, well, this seems strange. Usually they're staggered a little bit, so maybe we'll get our staggered release now, yeah. whether it's for good news or bad news. Yeah, I think I think that Xbox One and PS4 tried to hit each other on the same mark, but before that, it was always like a year to six months off. Mm -hmm. And who knows about the Switch, man? They're doing their own thing over there. So <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. But that that's the PlayStation, you know, controller look, looks good. Our links in the notes, so you can you can check that out. Um, but something cool, you know, that you know. Well, maybe cool. Something that a lot of people I think could take <laughs> yes, advantage of. Maybe cool. <laughs> right now is well, just game streaming in general. Yes. Um, we, we talk about cross-platform capabilities. I was had an issue. So one of my friends is wanting to play Worms WMD uh -huh. uh, on computer. I bought the Mac version. He has a Mac, right? I uh -huh. bought it in the good old game store for seven dollars. He bought it on Steam for thirty. I'm like, I got a deal. Ha ha. Well, come to find out, the good old ga good old games version is not servers are not compatible with the steam version even oh, though it's the come same on. game this is worms if call of yeah. duty can do it worms could have done it a decade ago yeah well it does cross platform we can play with pc players but they have to be bought through the same store oh, which that's is annoying a son of a bitch um if anything so i'm like man if they just had a streaming service i would we would both just bought the game and played it that way um, mm -hmm. but a lot of companies like 
Yeah, we'll talk about this in Stadia uh, from Google. Um, Amazon's looking to get into the uh, game streaming service as well. Yeah, I had no idea uh, this was happening until I started Googling if Call of Duty Warzone was on Stadia. Just because I feel like, you know, I wouldn't mind doing like some slightly more casual matches, just kind of like in my downtime, you know, hey, you know, just go get some experience on my sniper or this other weapon just for like a quick 20 minutes. And I don't really want to like move a chair over in front of my TV. You know, I don't want to like set up this whole thing. I have to tilt my TV a little differently when I'm sitting in front of it so I don't get glare from like the lamp. So I was like, it would just be nice if I could just like get a clip for my PlayStation controller, you know, and or like a Stadia controller possibly and just play it off of a smartphone. And, you know, I know, unfortunately, Stadia is not going through iPhones right now, but, you know, if they don't have enough player base, they'll eventually move it to iPhone eventually. But it doesn't matter because Call of Duty Warzone wasn't on it anyway. But through the Googling process, I found out that Amazon's working on one right now and it was kind of it's been rumored it's kind of been talked about just within the last week or so and I guess it's called Project Tempo so it's I can imagine that name's going to change and it, uh, I guess the slated release is somewhere within the next calendar year between 2020 yeah. and 2021 um, and another thing I didn't know I'm learning a lot about Amazon recently is they have their own game studio and they're working on like three titles right now one of them's like an MMO there's a team based shooter that they're doing and they're also working on like a free to play Lord of the Rings game that's an MMO, which I thought was actually pretty enticing because I don't know the name of it, but I know that there is a really popular Lord of the Rings game out there within like the last like decade. I don't remember what it was. What is Shadows of Mordor? Is that what it Shadows was? Shadows of Mordor, it's a single player game. Yeah, and it had a yeah. single. Um uh, something else more it had, yeah it had two really i like it i think yeah. that's a good game so i think that can kind of prove that you know a lord of the rings game can really pop off if you, if you do it right but um a lot of people are saying that maybe amazon server architecture might have an edge over google just because like even though google is like this big monolith and so is amazon you know people are projecting that amazon might have the edge since they're slightly more of a server company than google is uh so yeah who knows it's cool that there's going to be competition out there because I went and looked at Stadia's webpage again recently and their pricing is so confusing. I used to know it pretty I used to have it pretty down when it was uh, when it was about to come out but now it's like there's a pro tier, there's a free tier. One tier you you have to pay for games and you don't have to pay for games also but one you have to pay for everything. So it's just very confusing so I can imagine once they get a little competition from Amazon they'll go to like a flat rate or just one price and it's free or so yeah I'm well, glad I'm just glad that there's competition, that there's going to be in the marketplace soon. And yeah, there might not be consoles in your house anymore uh, going forward if the, if these really work. No, I don't think they're ever going to work. Uh, even Xbox is working one called uh, right now Projects uh, xCloud, um, mm-hmm. which is I actually really enjoy it. But what's cool about it is it lets me play my Xbox games remotely. If I own the game um, digitally, it'll let me play it anywhere I am. Yes, and caveat caveat like asterisks hopefully you're hardwired in to everything well, that you're playing but but i'm saying if it's on their like if it's a digital game on their server you can play mm-hmm. it through their their servers not not hardwired in gotcha. um, but i what, what's interesting about this you know again amazon is bought the rights to lord of the rings for a tv show that's so true i'm gonna guess this mmo is going to be like supplemental material for their show and be a game as well. Yeah, I mean they paid. I believe it was in the. It was in the. Was it? Was it in the billions? Did it? I don't think quite it was make big. it to the billions for that deal. I'm not 100 percent sure. You know, I seem silly throwing out the word B, but like I feel like billions is what a lot Nothing of things get paid for nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I tried the. I tried the console streaming thing through my PlayStation, but unfortunately everything is Wi-Fi in my apartment, so I had quite a bit of lag and I wasn't very far from my router or anything like that. But I, I will say if things were hardwired, it could have been a totally uh, different experience yeah. uh, for sure. But, yeah, it is kind of cool playing with this streaming technology. seems like they got to get it right eventually. It seems like right. they're so close. It's It seems the, like a bad idea to just give up on it. Right. Well, because here's what's going to happen is if your internet sucks or you have an outage, your latency, you know, and stuff like that, people, real gamers aren't going to care for this. Uh, Hashtag gonna, real gamer. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, the people who who do who spend a lot on gaming, like, you're a casual. You love this, right? Mm-hmm. The people who who play a lot of games, different variety of games, they're going to be like, well, you have to hit a bunch of check marks for me to want to do this. Oh, Chris, uh, I love it when you call me a casual. Uh, oh, you're such a casual. Do it again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, Amazon might have an edge with their, their things. Stadia, I think, has had a rocky launch. 
um, and isn't delivering a lot of features that they said they would deliver out the gate. Mm-hmm. But and I think to make up for that right now, and also you know everyone's kind of locked down, they're doing free two months of I think Stadia Pro if you sign up right now. And Pro is essentially like um, what is it? Uh, it's like their Netflix. You get some of their games that they have for free to play. Yeah, and stuff which like kind that. you don't yeah, have to buy the games individually. Or I'm guessing like it's kind of like Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus. You, yeah, I think they're all kind of doing free, like a yeah. small group of free games. Because the other part of say, like you mentioned, is that it operates like a Steam store. You have mm-hmm. to buy the game in that platform, in that service, and then play it there. Yeah, uh, it's strange. It's almost just like buying the controller is kind of like buying the console. So it's like imagine the console's in the controller, but not really. So it's like you still got to buy games, but there's still some free. And, yeah, it's it's. Confusing. And their controller doesn't even do the Wi-Fi connect that they promised yet. So, mm. um, But if you want to try it for two months, uh, the Pro, they have Destiny in there, uh, Borderlands 3, Red Dead uh, Redemption 2, Mortal Kombat. You can give it a try. See if your internet can can hold up to it, uh, and, and, and go that way. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a try uh, for you know free two months, Mike. I don't nothing. No sweat off my back. I like I yeah. like a good you know prolonged trial, which is something else <laughs> to talk about here. A little bit. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. It seems like we're definitely carving out a little Chris and Mike's video game corner in the yeah. podcast, at least for the foreseeable future. So I'll, I will say it now. If there's any video games out there that you're playing that you're really into, you'd like us to try, or you just want to hear our commentary on it, please let us know because we're kind of we're kind of in it right now. I can't, yeah. I can't promise myself that I'll be in this video game phase for the rest of the calendar year, but as of right now, I'm in it. Yeah, he He's in it. He's playing. We're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, some other streaming services, Netflix, are still pumping out some content occasionally, some new content. Mm-hmm. Um, Extraction, uh, the latest uh, movie uh, on Netflix this year, uh, produced by the Russo brothers and starring Chris Hemsworth, uh, is is coming out uh, April twenty fourth, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, it's at some point this month. Uh, this will be dropping on Netflix. Yep, and it's very much looks like a. I mean, if I can be honest, a, kind of a generic war zone kind of movie where the, the guy's like, I got to get this kid out of here, but I'm not leaving this kid behind. Yeah, kind of and and that's kind of what I was expecting when I was going into the trailer because everything about like the the art and the poster <laughs> and like the thumbnail for it said generic. But when you throw Chris Hemsworth and the Russo brothers into it, it does pique your interest. Um, when I was watching the trailer, I did, like I was saying earlier, I got Call of Duty vibes. I don't know if it's just because like I'm kind of like in it, like I was just saying a moment yeah. ago. So I was just like, oh, look at this body armor. Look at these kind of weapons. I'm feeling kind of this modern warfare stuff going on here. But one thing that I did notice is there's lots of like dynamic camera movement which i thought was pretty cool it Dude, seems like there's a few like extended like long can, drawn out camera work can i tell you the scene where the, he's back in the car up down the road and you're yes. seeing from the outside of the car he pulls a yui like a, like a pivot you know break and forward and the camera moves into the car with him in that mm-hmm. movement was absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, and you know what? When I saw that, that's when I said to myself, "Okay, I know the Russo brothers are producing it, but now I have to look up the director." Yes. So I looked up the director, Sam Hargrave, and no he, surprise here. <laughs> yep. He has done stunts and action work on pretty much all of our favorite movies here at the Superhero Slate: Avengers: Endgame, Deadpool 2, Infinity War, Ragnarok, um, Atomic Blonde, Suicide Squad, uh, Civil War. I mean, he's been in everything, and like we've said before we're we're fans of john wick we love this whole new upheaval of uh stunt coordinators becoming like directors so i think all of this is really getting me excited to watch it because i have to say as as much as we love ryan reynolds here at the podcast i watched that movie six underground that netflix produced that uh, it's another very high budget action movie and it was just it was just kind of, it was, it was just very generic. It, fe- it felt like a waste of money. And that was, was it directed by Michael Bay? Yeah, or just Michael produced? Bay. A Michael Bay movie, generic. And <laughs> never. Yeah, it was a little unfortunate. So it feels like this could finally be maybe something worth the money that Netflix spent. So I'm actually really looking forward to this. I think this will be really fun and exciting and i'm looking forward to the action and the story actually i connected with the story a little bit so it's not just chris hemsworth running around like a dummy trying to like trying to retrieve like a bag of diamonds or something like that he's trying to keep like a kid alive 
five. So seems like they'll they'll have a repertoire yeah. throughout the throughout the movie. So yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by the trailer. Yeah, I, I think that that shot sticks out in my head out of everything in this trailer. Um, yeah, because you know the visuals is very like had the the beginning of Bloodshot just stayed like that the whole movie. That's this is what it would look like. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I think you know it, it's got some. I think there could be some twists and turns. And, and if he's a stunt guy doing, it, he's probably got like all these great ideas for how the camera could move, oh, how yeah. scenes can go down that he's never got to do in another movie. So he's like, I'm gonna do it now. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of see how some of this plays out and how um, you know the one man army that is Chris Hemsworth takes on both you know the government and these two mobs trying to get this kid. So yeah, um, gonna be gonna be fun. Gonna be gonna be interesting. Probably uh, a lot more interesting than the launch of Quibi, Mike. No, <laughs> I'm just giving. I'm just giving shit because you're because you're the Quibi shell. So yeah, I feel uh, like tell, I'm the I'm feel like I'm the Quibi guy here on the podcast. Go, go ahead and tell me um, the news on Quibi. Yes, Quibi launched this week on Monday. Well, I guess technically it was last week, but within the last seven days, Quibi is now out there, birthed into the world by former Disney head Jeffrey Katzenberg. And uh, one thing I didn't know, I think technically the CEO of the company used to run HP. Um, uh, I guess she uh, has been in kind of like the tech space for a while. I just didn't know that. I thought I'd throw that out there. So Quibi in the first couple of days, I think, racked in around 300,000 downloads. And now uh, uh, they're up to, I think, 830,000 is the latest number. Uh So it's kind of hard to judge off those numbers yet because you're kind of looking for the millions. You're looking for that one mil, two mil big number that you can splash up there to kind of compete at least percentage wise, kind of near adjacent to Disney Plus. So they haven't quite hit that uh, seven figure number just yet. But some people are saying this is a this is a halfway decent performance for an app download, because I guess how do you judge it? Do you judge it by its app qualities or do you judge it by its kind of like streaming qualities who knows what you're supposed to do but quibi yeah. is out there in the world and uh you were the one that let me know first that this is the longest trial period without yeah. having to pay for a service we've ever seen 90 <laughs> days that is that is risky uh you know i mean in 90 days will you forget and get it but like is it because every episode is like if you took an episode of uh, what is it chrissy's court in here right mm-hmm. put three of those together that's really like a half hour show is mm-hmm. that like, and you would like, uh, you get a month free of that service. So is, are they just tripling everything because you're getting a third of what you would normally get? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. This could be very much just a very strategical move, trying to get as many people to download it and get it on their phone as possible. Like uh, the kind of the nice thing about it is it's, uh, I mean, I guess Apple really likes this is all the billing goes through the app store. So Apple's going to get their 30% cut no matter yeah. what. Uh, but it was nice. I didn't have to put in any credit card information or anything like that. I do have to say, I did put a reminder in my phone. Everybody who got it on day one will be renewing. I think it's around July 6th, uh-huh. I believe. So I put a reminder on July 4th in my phone. Quibi uh, charges you in two days. Uh, so I'll make the final decision there. But I've only been able to watch two things right now. I checked out uh, a shoe, like a sneakerhead documentary series called You Ain't Got These from Lena Waith, who's a, a really up and coming writer. She's done some stuff for Master of None uh, over on Netflix. So she's very talented. Um, and what really the thing that I wanted to look into this was the app, the whole feature of the turn style. You turn it horizontal, you turn it vertical, you're getting different video content. Kind of. It really just depends on what you're watching, to be honest. So this is just a little docu-series about sneakerheads. So... I'm constantly turning my screen, testing it out, knowing what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? In this type of show, you're not really missing anything, but they are doing some creative things. So if you're watching a show about sneakers landscape, right? You're seeing like a nice, sexy shot of like a Air Jordan, right? That you It's in profile. It's just the one sneaker there. And the shoes, if you haven't looked at a shoe in a while, it's a very landscaped object. So it works well in a landscape. So what happens when you turn your phone vertically? Do you th- Is it just going to be auto-cropped? Are they going to crop off the shoe? Are they going to give a bunch of blank space above and below the shoe? What they do is they're kind of doing kind of this modulation kind of comic book page thing, at least on this show, where they're giving you an extra shot of the shoe. So they kind of tiled two little video segments at the top and the bottom. So those are kind of neat, creative ways to fill the frame, but it does feel like the master edit is still the landscape view. So it just seems like really just pick an orientation that you're okay holding your phone at for six minutes and you're fine. 
Um, I checked out Punked. Uh, I have to say, um, I'm a fan of Chance the Rapper, so you know, I you know, it wasn't really lost on his charisma wasn't necessarily lost on me. But it was just it was punked. It was the same punk that you remember, you know, pranks on celebrities. But now I'm old, Chris. I'm old, and I don't know who these celebrities are. Yep, the yeah, first person it. they pranked, I was like, I don't know who this is. So I guess maybe a younger uh, younger audience might enjoy punked a little bit more. Uh, than I will, but it was the same thing with punk. Like I was, I was, I was cranking my phone like it was a workout app. Like what, what am I missing? What am I missing? So uh, if anybody else ha- has Quibi right now and has a recommendation for a show that really takes advantage of it, let me know. But honestly, I feel like I'm just gonna have anxiety because I feel like I'm always missing something. So I'm always moving my phone and it's not super enjoyable. So I don't know exactly how they fix that problem. Or maybe, maybe even like a simple little notification in the corner, like a little dot that glows that tells me to turn the screen. I don't mind being coached through my content. I think that's the goal on some of the later shows that require you to turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, was to have that notification is what I yeah. said. So, um, uh, but the biggest thing, at least from being quarantined, my wife and I are sharing a lot of media together because, you know, we're quarant- we're cohabitating. And normally that's what we do in any given circumstances. We like to find stuff that we both like to watch. And there theoretically could be stuff on Quibi that we both want to watch. But how the heck are we supposed to do it? I guess we could like cuddle up on the couch and try to like hold Look, the phone, but it's driving my wife crazy because me, I keep I keep moving the phone. She's like, "Stop moving the phone!" But I'm like, well, "We might be missing something." Here's my thing: I understand the draw of Quibi having your phone held both ways, right? You have your Snapchat, Instagram Stories crowd that holds it vertically. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the older crowd who has been using phones for years and turns it horizontally whenever you want to watch a video. They might still be flipping their phone. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, it, I, I, we're in that crowd, Mike. I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> but I want to watch this shit on my TV. I want to watch it on the screen. I don't want to sit here and hold my phone. I don't want to go dig out my iPad to, to watch a Quibi show, right, for seven mm-hmm. minutes. I'd rather just put it up on my AirPlay to my Apple TV or just have an app on the Apple TV. It's like, hey, note, you may see more content on your mobile device by holding it vertically. But here is the horizontal, you know, the regular movie version of, of this. Uh-huh. And go because I want to watch it, but I'm not about to get my phone out and watch it on my phone. I'm 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 taking a stance against it. I'm not signing up on my phone until I put <laughs> something on the Apple TV app, which I'd I'd love to do. I would love to watch some of this stuff on there, uh-huh. like especially when Reno 911 comes back out. I'm like, I'd love to watch this, but I'm not gonna do it on my phone. And how do you yeah. share that with somebody? else like. <laughs> exactly uh, uh you can't take screenshots in the app i yep. mean th- those were the last reports let me check let me test it out right now to see if anything has well, changed in the future you, i'm going to click on the most dangerous game i don't know what this is but it's loading up now you right, cannot take screenshots it. on disney plus either though that for copyright stuff all right yep i took a screenshot and it's just and it's just black but at yeah. the same time there's workarounds with disney plus you could pull up the browser feature there's lots of different ways you can get around it but with quibi you're just kind of locked down so a lot of people were saying like you if if they if quibi was lucky enough to have their baby yoda how do you share the baby yoda you know so i don't know if these are things that they just forgot to add to the app to be honest uh, but yeah, no, nobody... I mean, I think it's a copyright restriction thing, but they're going to be like, well, you can't meme something you can't take a picture of. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really know what exactly they're going to do know what there. You, you get two more phones, Mike, and you're filming <laughs> – one phone playing it horizontal, one phone doing it vertically. That's what I need. That's, with another that's set of phones. I need my wife to get the Quibi app as well, and then we need to put our phones next to each other. One one's going to be horizontal, one's going to be vertical. We're going to try to hit play at the same time, and then there you go. I get both experiences. My anxiety is now managed. It will uh, not be. You'll be like, which screen do I watch? Yeah. You're, you're like, you're, tur- you're going back and forth. Yeah, and also like, I, I, it's hard for me to hold my phone for six minutes if I'm trying to show it to somebody else and myself. It's like now I've become a tripod. Like, yeah, I don't know. Quibi, I mean, good luck. I, I'm not a naysayer. I'm not somebody that's just going to dunk on a service uh, because, I like, I'm we, dunking we, on it all we like, I like content. I mean, they're bringing back Reno 911. No one else was doing that, so I'll, I'll thank them for that. But, yeah, weird, a weird launch for Quibi. And the fun thing is there's still people out there that don't know what the hell we're talking about. They're like, what the fuck is Quibi? What are you talking about? So, What's a Quibi? It's a quick bite. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah. Get to watch you know, it on your phone. I don't want and, to. Too bad. And it's so funny because all of their commercials were like showing people in line for things. No one's in line for things anymore. <laughs> I, I was in line for Home Depot this today. 
Well, you should have you should have watched the quib. But they, they they make they make you wait and count the number of people in and out of the store. So uh, I appreciate that about them. We need uh, we need pa- we need more passive waiting in the world to get through those quibs. I don't. Well, that drain. I, I'm afraid of the battery drain. To be completely honest, <laughs> I don't I don't have a charger on me all the time. But yeah, either way, Quibi's out. Try it out. It's for free. Three months, ninety days. Give it a shot. Or you can just go over and pay for your Disney Plus because that's what we're doing right now. We're, yeah. we're, um, it surpassed fifty million subscribers uh during the COVID 19 pandemic I, I believe it launched in the uk and india uh and maybe yeah. other countries but i just know uk and india were the huge markets for them this uh this this week this month yeah. which which is pretty impressive disney plus hasn't even been out for a year yet they're already at 50 million and netflix has been around i don't even know for a while now and they're at 167 million so they're definitely outpacing disney plus but i would guess that netflix is probably also outspending disney plus as well so yeah i would say there's nothing to nothing to shake a stick well, at there with those numbers what's interesting is and i pulled this up uh from um I believe it's a website KCRW if you're familiar with them. <laughs> um, that um, a lot of Disney Plus subscribers are from Hotstar, which is an Indian service that packages multiple streamers together. Mm-hmm. So to get Disney Plus in India, you have to purchase Hotstar, or you're already part of Hotstar. Yeah. You know, one thing I also didn't know is there's a lot of international governments out there that will not let your streaming service come into their country unless you promise that some percentage of your catalog is home to a lot of uh, country specific yeah. content. So like if you're releasing a streaming service in India, you have to have like, I, I don't know what the number is, but let's say like 40% of your content of your library has to be like native native Indian content stuff produced in that country. So yeah, yeah. these streaming services look bizarrely and, different in different countries because you have to hit those requirements. Yes. Yeah. And we, we sit over here and we, we're like, oh, well, we want this, this, and this in there. But what other you know countries have different contracts with streaming? I know Australia uses um, Foxtel, uh, and I believe it's Foxtel down in uh, Australia, which has like houses almost everything. They don't have Hulu down there. Um, or there's or there's something else. I think Sky they have down there maybe, um, mm-hmm. that, which houses the other half of the stuff. They have like a lock on like due to their government and how everything operates, they have like a, a monopoly on streaming stuff down there. So uh, we, we think, you know, sometimes we don't have it good, but, you know, other times our streaming services look pretty uh, pretty, pretty nice compared to everybody else. Pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Pretty good. Uh, speaking of, uh, do you remember the old cartoon Robin Hood? From Disney. Yes, I do. These were this was that was one of the few Disney movies that I would say uh, a boy could easily like when he was a child growing up. I'm not saying boys can't like Disney princess movies, but you know, at least in my well, ho- household, I like the stuff that didn't necessarily focus around a princess. Robin Hood is a timeless classic. I grew up watching Robin Hood Men in Tights mm-hmm. and this cartoon Robin Hood. Because my grandma would not let me watch Robin Hood Men in Tights. I'll tell you yeah. that right now. <laughs> and just to be clear, this is the Robin Hood where the where the people are animals. Exactly. You want Robin? He's a fox. Mm-hmm. You want uh, you want uh, this chicken strumming on a banjo to that doing that song? I can't think of the tune up my head right now. <laughs> it's uh, been a while since we've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, a little John's a bear who looks like Baloo. I mean, mm-hmm. all these Disney characters all look the same, right? Um, so they are making this uh cartoon into a live action cg hybrid it's in development right now what's that word we're using live action yeah this is one thing that i've really been looking out there there's not a lot of official wording for this announcement but the closest thing i could find was um live action cg hybrid from the insider that uh that reported about this but when i first saw this announced i got really excited because the lion king wasn't what popped in my head first it was zootopia Zootopia is a great movie. I love that film. They do a great job kind of turning the animals and the people. I love all the little nuances that they did with the way these these animals live their life. I mean, I guess with Lion King, it kind of makes sense artistically, the direction that they went. Uh, it sounds like the execution didn't work out as much as they thought it would, but it's like a real-life nature documentary, but the animals talk. Okay, I kind of get it. But, like, this is – the animals are going to be wearing – clothes in this one they're going to be walking on two feet you know like bipeds like mimicking humans it's i feel like if they're going for like a cg look like we gotta throw away the term live live action that's just that doesn't belong well, attached to this at all and i can't see anybody arguing it for it in that direction well but you can though because here's the thing have you seen the good dinosaur the good dinosaur yeah there was a for person picture. in it though right but, but no no there wasn't a person it was 
CG characters with live action backgrounds. I don't think there are real live action backgrounds. I mean, they could so, have been so, rendered. So, to some be of them were live. Some of them were real, but like you're saying, you can tell what's a cartoon, right? Because the dinosaur and the the little boy were definitely mm-hmm. cartoon characters, but the backgrounds were photorealistic. Yes, least. but I guarantee, if that movie was submitted for awards, I'm I'm sure it was, but it, you know, it didn't perform as well as they wanted no, to. No, I bet I bet they submitted it towards animated film, right. unlike. Like, but if they said live, if stuff. they said a CG movie, like, and you get photorealistic backgrounds, you don't think it's a CG movie. You're like, oh, it's, yeah. it's a live act. It's it's not for us to determine. It's for the people who are like, what are we watching here? Well, it's half live action, half CG. Yeah, I'm Which just you saying get the the great CG yeah animals that we know and love in a very very l- realistic backdrop. I'm just saying this is the time. This is going to be the hill that everybody dies on. You know, the waters were murky with the Lion King, but when Robin Hood comes into development, we absolutely need to decide what live action is and what lifelike is and what animation is because this movie is going to be mainly animation artists working on characters. There there could be mocap people there for sure, you know, just because they want to get those mocap maybe people, performers with the dots like in the behind the scenes thing. But it's just like this is an animated movie to me more than ever if you're having well, animals act like people. Here's the thing. I don't want realistic animals in guard because my problem with The Lion King is they all talked, but they didn't have any emotion on their faces. Mm-hmm. They kept their real animal faces, right? In this one, you need a fox that winks at the camera. Exactly. Like, who, who has fun. So what does this even look like? Is it like a – is it kind of like – you know? are you familiar with the new Pokemon um, – the the new one that yeah, I choose I've, you yeah I've seen I've seen a little bit of it's it, yeah. literally the original Pokemon movie redone in CG mm-hmm. um, graphics so it's the same stuff same shots almost I mean they they tweak some stuff because if it was shot for shot it wouldn't be worth releasing but like you know maybe that maybe that's what I want to see like uh, if like you said, if, mentioned a Zootopia style yeah but. if you want success just hire the Zootopia team they're great I love that movie it's so good Zootopia is good if you haven't seen it go watch it it's great it's plug in Jason Bateman again Jason Bateman he's in the outsider he's also the voice of the fox yes there yeah that's right there's a fox in Zootopia it's it's just Zootopia so just do that and you'll be fine and you won't piss people off so yeah. uh but yeah but, this but, is the hill that i'll be dying on but here, but here's so. the thing i don't want a remake of that movie exactly i want them to take some liberties with it oh yeah for sure because i mean i love the original like if you just redid it with like it sounds the same like who's the voice actors you're gonna get because all those are classic disney voice actors mm-hmm. of that era what the jungle book is, i mean Ka is even in this one like the snake same voice actor did both mm-hmm. of them like it's like Hey Disney, we have these we have these voice actors who portray like an animated snake. Let's put that snake in as many movies as we can, <laughs> and it's like keeping your your same actors without having to do it. So I, I'm interested to see what they do with this, but let's do something new with it. Yeah, and if I don't know if we mentioned this in the in the fever discussion, there this will be on Disney Plus. This Disney will be Plus, on the yeah, Disney Plus only, yeah. not theaters. Uh, so I don't know if it'll quite it might it might be the bump they die on, Mike, rather than the hill for Disney. <laughs> the uh, the speed bump. Yeah, Lady the Tramp's doing good on there, and that's a that's a mix. That's live action people and animals. So the MCU uh, had a press release come out this week uh, from uh, France saying that a She-Hulk, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel are confirmed for 2022 still. Now, will that you know be delayed or not? I don't know right now, but you know people were like, when do they come out? We don't know. Was it 2021 late or what? So they did say you know, in this press release from them, 2022 at this current date. Yeah, uh, I mean, all I can say is these shows are in probably most of them are in a stage where they are writing them, which yeah. is good. You can write from home because the stay at home order for Hollywood and Los Angeles was bumped from the end of April to now the middle of May. And that's still a tentative month. So there's still a lot of development going on. People can still write stuff, but um, I saw that there's a, there's a lot of bidding going on right now for once people can go back to work, all of the all of the sets, all of the spaces, all of the offices. There's just going to be this there's going to be this this gold rush basically for people to get back into physical environments. So it seems like Disney will have the money, the bidding money for sure, to get these uh, locations uh, ready to go. So yeah, I got to imagine when 
things kick back up, we're going to be well, talking about so much stuff on the show. We're going to have so many leaked set photos. Everyone's going to be back to work. There's going to be so much. There's going to be, be so rush. Many. I think they're going to be rushing a lot of productions to meet deadlines at that point. You know, like, hey, we, we don't have time to debate this. Let's just go out and do it. Yeah. There's going to be so many leaked toys or uh, merchandised movie theater cups with leaked art that we'll be talking about yeah. like every single day. <laughs> oh, I guarantee you. I mean, I'll tell you about any every Sony movie that was pushed back a year is going to have leaks on it. Yeah, so. I we know Morbius out there is on a collectible popcorn cup in a factory, and I want to see that cup. Yeah, the Spider Man, you know, uh, cameo in that is going to be on. <laughs> yes, something exactly. Sooner than later. But that's that's one way to look. MTU uh, 2020 is still still playing for that. I didn't know this, or I forgot really entirely. Daredevil's <laughs> fifth anniversary was this week as well, from when it debuted on Netflix. It feels like it was ten years ago. It doesn't feel like yeah, it was five. It, yeah, it feels like a different era in this in the MCU, and it's kind of been forgotten about, you know, since we forgot about it. But also, um, I forgot this the the Netflix Disney exclusivity window is almost done with some of these characters. So, I mean, there's been kind of rumors floating out there about Daredevil popping back up. I don't know if it's going to be on Disney Plus or if it's going to be in a movie. We haven't really talked about it much because they've just been very unsubstantiated uh, rumors. But I think legally, Daredevil can come back it, yeah. now or at least within the next uh, short window of time. Yeah. Well, by the time we get a Marvel movie, uh, <laughs> he may sh- he may show up in Spider-Man. Um, down the road, technically, because that's a Sony thing, not a Disney mm-hmm. exclusivity. Um, you, you just never know where where Daredevil might pop up. I think he'd be in a movie before he'd be on a, a show again. Um, but that's we'll if see. it's yeah, it depends. If it's who knows, maybe it's not even Charlie Cox. We don't even know yet. Yeah, I don't think. I think I think that's been wiped under the rug from the MCU and will exist in the, anything from Shield will never come forward. Anything from there will never go the mm-hmm. other way. So. Uh, again, because the only thing that ever did come forward from the TV shows was Jarvis from Agent Carter into Endgame. So yeah. that was the only thing that ever moved forward. The New Mutants, uh, something um, people probably wish was swept under the rug, <laughs> um, has a, this runtime revealed because you know it's supposed to be in theaters now um, with a 94-minute runtime, which makes it yes. the shortest X-Men movie to date. 94 minutes. That is exactly what you want to see on a movie you're not sure about. Because if it's bad, you don't have to watch that much of it. And if it's great, great movies that are 90 minutes are better than great movies that are two hours, in my opinion. Because, like, it's just so great. It's concise. You get in and out. You have a great time. You can move on with your life. And you can concisely talk about things that you watched because you you statistically watched less things. So Mm -hmm. it's just easier to to hold in your brain. Well, the first X-Men movie is only 10 minutes longer. And people (laughs) like the first first X-Men movie. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of the, I think it was the shortest movie for the longest time. So if you're trying to cram too many storylines into, hey, meet these characters movie, you know, you've done yourself a disservice. Uh Um, The longest movie, and they they put this in an article, I didn't realize this, was Apocalypse at 144 minutes. Can you imagine putting another half of a movie, of your movie into that? Like, that's 50 more minutes that you would have to sit in that theater. Apocalypse, what a movie. Wow. I I don't know if I, I hate it more than Dark Phoenix. Oh, man, that's rough. That's a tough call. A uh, real Sophie's Choice of X-Men. <laughs> but at least Apocalypse had two Quicksilver scenes, and a, and a, or at least one Quicksilver scene and a Wolverine scene. So Yeah, that's true. Well, we'll think about that. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is still on track. It has not been uh, changed due to the COVID-19 stuff. So, honestly, any of those release dates that were originally planned, um, they were all booked anyway, except one in February. Uh Um, It's still going to come out uh, post-Captain Marvel uh, 2. That's what I'm thinking. Uh So. I don't yeah. think it it yeah. seems like it seems like now we're really starting to see the next time we get to see the Guardians, it's gonna be quite some time for an audience to be seeing them. So I, I'm curious if, if Gunn has kind of worked that into the script. You know, uh, it seems like we're not necessarily gonna be seeing them right after they left Earth and Endgame and like waving goodbye to Thor onto his next adventure and then they continue things. It seems like it would make sense for the story to pick up maybe like five or maybe even like 10 years later. I don't even well, know how they're doing the timelines now in the what, MCU where the characters have kind of lived with the, the things that have happened. Well, what, what's interesting is guardians one and guardians two are six months apart set in 2014. Mm-hmm. The next time we meet them was technically 2020 um, mm-hmm. or 2019, 2018, 2019, whenever infinity war takes place and we didn't mm-hmm. see anything in between. So if we see them again, I'm expecting you know, a full grown Groot again, no more teenage yeah. Groot, no more baby Groot, uh-huh. another fully powered Groot. Um, probably still searching for Gamora 
out in the world and she's not rejoined the team yet so um i'm, I'm excited to see kind of how a possible 10 year because you know it's 2025 in that that movie right 2023 2024 um we may not see them until you know a 10 year time gap between yep. guardians 2 and guardians 3 which that's is a lot un- of time that's a lot of times for shit to happen and that's unheard of in a marvel movie you know right mm-hmm. like they just kind of all picked them up um beforehand so we'll we'll see how this plays off going going forward Mm-hmm. Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey is now a video on demand. I think you can watch it on HBO, but so in that the rental is less than five dollars now. So if you have not seen Birds of Prey and have not listened to our review, you have no excuse. Go rent it or watch it on HBO, and then come back and listen to our review we did earlier this year. Yeah, and then go make your own sandwich. <laughs> I really want to egg, make a sandwich. Egg, egg, bacon sandwich. Exactly. Um, Snowpiercer, the once once was a movie with Chris Evans, and now a. TV show on TNT uh-huh. uh, got an, another. It's another teaser. Look at look at it. It's a, it's officially on time. Hint hint because train uh, to come out <laughs> um, when it was supposed to. The uh, coronavirus has not delayed the coming of Snowpiercer, if you will. It's a rival. So yeah, I don't know if this is like the first teaser trailer or maybe the one with the most footage so far. But this is the first one I've seen, and I was honestly surprised to see that. Are they just straight up remaking the movie? episodically because the trailer showed a lot of moments that had come from the movie like the scene where they're battling all of the security officers in that one train car where the lights go out and there's just like blood and massacre and they're using like blunt objects uh there, there's just a lot of visually similar scenes from the movie so i'm curious how much they're going to divert from what the movie did um are they just recasting the same characters are they going to try to originate some way you know most tv series and most networks want a show to go for more than just one season so like uh, how are they going to continue the story on so those are those are mainly my questions at this point in time i don't know anything so i would just say go watch snowpiercer um the movie that stars um uh, Chris Evans and right. direct that was that directed by Bong Joon Ho it, or it was yes okay yeah so I mean Oscar winning director so uh, there's nothing to I'm using nothing to shake a stick at a lot in this episode so mm-hmm. I'll keep it going no one's shaking a stick at Snowpiercer so go watch right. Snowpiercer the movie yeah movie's good I think this is an interesting thing. I think it could take one of these uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use Westworld as an example Mike because it's on right now the mm-hmm. first season followed the original movie a little bit the original mm-hmm. Westworld movies and I think this first season will follow the movie, and then after that, it'll branch off. Yeah. Uh, season ju- two and three will kind of yeah. tackle some I, other stuff. I just I just checked on our favorite website, uh, Just Watch. Uh, uh, Snow Snowpiercer is streaming in um, Netflix, so just go watch there it. There you go. Boom. Netflix and chill on the Snowpiercer. Uh, Midnight Gospel here, Mike. I don't know anything about this. I didn't watch this trailer. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. So lay it on me. What is I'll fill in the audience. This is the first official trailer for Pendleton Ward's next cartoon. And if you're not familiar with Pendleton Ward, he is the creator of the insanely popular and successful show Adventure Time, which uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. That was on uh, Cartoon Network. Is he doing the Adventure Time uh, reboot on HBO? I think he's just in a producer role. Okay. I believe at, at some point through the series of Adventure Time, he kind of handed over the reins of a lot of the show to a um, uh, producer. I think his name's Adam Muto. I think he's got a he had a lot of the decisions over the kind of uh, the large chunk of Adventure Time. I think he's mainly working on the HBO stuff. But he has moved on to uh, Netflix to create this show, The Midnight Gospel. And I wanted to bring it up for two reasons. One, it just looks crazy. Like, the colors are crazy vivid. It's just nuts. A bunch of weird characters. This looks very much like an adult swim show. Uh, so I think that'll gravitate a lot of people towards it. So it has that mature tone to it. Tone to it. So we're not talking like Adventure Time goofiness. This is uh, some more m- mature uh, themes going on there. I think uh, I, think I saw a titty. In the trailer, <laughs> if, if that's a that'll give anything across for the maturity level of it. Uh, but the second reason is the main character of the show is doing an interdimensional podcast. So that's how he he goes throughout the uh, cosmos through some sort of contraption that looks like an ear kind of looks like two butt cheeks he kind of sticks his head in and then i think he's transported across the universe and he goes to i think he's going to different worlds and he's just kind of interviewing people from different planets and just getting their story and he kind of turns it into like his uh intergalactic radio show uh podcast type of thing so i thought that was kind of funny like you know we can we can vibe with that a little bit but 
I believe, uh, pun and in, pun intended, I believe this drops on 420, April 20th. So yeah, it just looks, it looks visually like a feast. So go check out the trailer for Midnight Gospel. Uh, I hope it's good. I hope it's just as crazy and weird as, and subversive as a lot of early Adventure Time was. Yeah, I'm, I've never, I've, I've never watched Adventure Time, so that's probably why I've missed out on this a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I'll give this trailer a watch after, after this and see what's going on. Yay! And lastly, what what really gave us a, a conversation not about this topic but about some other stuff. Um, SNL did their at home show this weekend, mm-hmm. uh, and one of them was an animated short about the middle aged mutant. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> before before we get into it, Chris, this takes me back to the simpler times. <laughs> Before pandemics and viruses, where you would throw in uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle news at the uh, end of yeah, every yeah. episode, whenever Mike's we had favorite it. movie uh, yes. series that never got a trilogy. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad we're back to talking about the turtles here. Uh, this almost wasn't in the show, uh, but I saw some people tweeting about it today on Sunday, the day after it aired. So I don't know about you, but uh, I grew up watching the original. 90s maybe yeah. even it was late 80s i'm not even entirely sure when the animated yeah. series started I think it's 89 through like 94 yeah and i we had me and my brother had all the action figures we had all the ninja turtle plastic uh, that was sold we loved uh, it i'm gonna be honest i actually had a couple ninja turtles comic books they were like Ooh. little short graphic novels um mm-hmm. that came out during that time frame and some of the first comic books i remember actually having was yeah. uh, ninja turtles yeah, so uh, I have to say this this parody was re- really funny. The middle aged mutant ninja turtles is exactly what you think it is. It's a take on what basically where are the turtles now? They're all old, they're depressed, they're living very normal lives. Mm-hmm. Shredder has died from old age. Um, yeah. But I think about could, you know your test results <laughs> from from biopsies. Yeah, but I think we wanted to talk about it more from a technical level. Yeah. So visually, this this it doesn't look like it's hand drawn animation to me. This kind of looks like flash animation, but they did put some interesting filters on it. They they delivered it in the four by three aspect ratio, which mm-hmm. I appreciate. They kind of put some um some scratch some, marks, some, on some it. smearing and some yeah. and some like um I don't know what the off registration of colors are. Um yeah, they really did their best to try to make it look old you know it it wouldn't really fool anybody but it, it kind of puts you back into that mind space of being in the 90s but uh chris you, you brought up a good thing when we were talking about it earlier talking about just the how do you record audio for a cartoon when yeah. people can't go into a studio exactly so what my my disappointment with this is right out the gate someone has recorded this on their phone in a bathroom and they turned <laughs> it into the saturday night live digital artist yes. and what is really sad is here we are Two not voiceover artists, two not professionals in, in you know the uh, entertainment industry, making a podcast with better quality with $150 between us to total. We have $150 of audio recording equipment, and who's and these people just don't have a microphone <laughs> or a, a blanket to record it. Mike's doing it in his closet, right? Sounds great. I'm doing yeah. it in a pop vinyl thing. No matter where we went, we were going to make our show sound good. That was day number one, but we didn't break the bank. To make it sound good. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly think this is more of a failure of uh, the celebrities, the people who are being uh, held responsible for recording their own audio, because I have a feeling the audio engineers send out an email to these people with very clear instructions, telling them exactly what to do. Like, if you don't have a microphone, at the very least, take your fanciest smartphone you have, open up the memos app and just go in your closet find anywhere with a bunch of fabric around you just don't go into an empty pristine room or a bathroom and record your lines and they're just like what did they say oh yeah the email said something about record the audio with your phone okay that's fine i'm in i'm in line getting coffee right now i'll just do it right here so yeah it is kind of interesting there's a scene where they're on a park bench where yeah. one turtle sounds like halfway decent and the other turtle sounds like he's talking into a toilet bowl so yeah, yeah it's it's just a uh, the the technical hurdles that people that people that get paid professionally have to have to go through is exactly and you know, we're just sitting here just doing this for fun and I'm like you know if we sounded bad someone would tell us uh, and and they're they're getting on Saturday Night Live with their their poor audio <laughs> quality so I feel like we deserve an award or yeah. an accolade well I'll use this as an opportunity as well uh, I, I feel like maybe every ten or so episodes I say this if anything ever sounds weird on the podcast if you ever hear my creaky chair which I'm desperately trying to replace but in the age of corona it's hard to shop for furniture if anything ever sounds weird and anything ever bugs you if we're if we're saying a word too much oh, if I'm we're, shaking uh, the stick at Mike right now <laughs> if we're too close to the microphone if our peas are popping too loud just 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 let us know 
know and, and we'll fix it. Yeah, yeah. And, and th- thank you to everyone who does let me know when an episode does not show up. I did not know this, but if you upload an M4A file, Spotify will not play it. Um, <laughs> we have a listener in Europe who let me know, and I uploaded it as an MP3, which it should have been to begin with. That was my fault. Mm. Um, it uploaded to Spotify just Gosh, fine. So you, you can't can, upload audio. You can't hang drywall. What good are you for, Chris? I hung that drywall just to hang <laughs> the right direction, okay? I, I did it the hard way. I'm doing things Ooh. the hard way the first time. <laughs> Uh, but it, 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 if something does happen, I know our listeners, I shout out to Jason, shout out to Jim people, uh, Monday morning, I, they get up before I do. And by God, they let me know if that episode's not up when they go to work. Uh, so I appreciate those people. It does not bother me. I'm not offended by that at all. Please let us know. We, we want to get better. We want you to have a great time listening to our show. That's how we grow people. That's how exactly. We grow. And that's it for this show, Mike. We'll end on this positive, happy, energy filled <laughs> note. Yeah. If people want to know what you're up to this week, what you're doing, where can they find you at, buddy? Oh, it's so easy. All you got to do is follow me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, see what you're doing in this time of social isolation, where can they find you? Oh, I'm isolating, baby. Don't you worry. You can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N, or Instagram, Valdan87. I'm going to be putting up all these. I've, I've documented the hell out of my garage work uh, this weekend. <laughs> so whenever it's all done, I'm going to make a nice little documentary about it. Uh, probably put it out here called The Garage King uh, with my my you know enemy, Carol Baskins. She's out there trying to <laughs> tear down my drywall. No, I'm kidding. Um, or you can head over to Comic UI. Uh, people want to know about our episodes. Here We're here every week, whether everything's shut down or not. We're still doing this show, Mike. And we prepared for social isolation by recording this podcast across the country from each other when we started. So we've been doing this for you know, five, six years, uh, ready for this kind of thing. So where can people, uh, find our episodes at? Oh, that's so easy. Just visit superhero slate.com. That's right. We got the domain name five years ago and I'm glad we did superhero slate.com. Uh, that's the place, best place to find all of our show notes. So we got a lot of hyperlinks in this episode, mainly because I wrote half of the show notes. So usually I, I overlink <laughs> things. So I did clean it up want, a little bit, but it's yeah, fine. <laughs> if you ever want to check my work, like my high school teachers, uh, go check out all these links in the show notes and you can find us on Apple podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and wherever else you love to listen to podcasts. Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at superhero slate dot com slash store uh like i said throughout this whole episode we love hearing from you let us know what video games you're playing uh let us know if you think we need any technical improvements on the podcast uh we want to know uh what you want and we'll give it to you uh and also we love our super fans of the show so if you want to be a super fan of the show right now all you got to do it's the easiest thing you just got to wash your hands wash your hands stay home and you'll be a super fan of the show also, you can share it with people because, you know, they need stuff to do during this downtime. <laughs> They're looking for podcasts to listen to. And by gosh, we're interesting sometimes. So, <laughs> you know, sh- send it over. They'll, they'll like the video game section or, or the part where we talk about um, Chris Hensworth. People love looking at him. So, Yo, you know, share that. Good, lo- good looking guy. But yeah. uh, like I say, like I say every week, we'll be here every week, folks. That's right. And we'll catch you guys next week. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. You know, you've got me a brilliant idea here, Mike. What if it's <laughs> one cup at a gas station, right? a big cup, like a like mm-hmm. a huge theater style cup, but inside it's divided into se- different sections, Ooh, so you can fill cup. each section with a different drink. That'd be fun. You pop the lid on it, and then the lid rotates to the one you want. Whoa, like one of those colored pens where you have exactly all the like the colored pens. <laughs>